Well, hi everyone, and welcome to our first video of 2013. And here is the bonus, the 10th set of Super Bible Facts for Super Bible Study. Now, first, as I have said in each of these Super Bible Facts videos, here are the very important five different groups or classes of people who are addressed from the first chapter of Matthew to the last chapter of Revelation. Now, number one, unsaved Israelites who were under the law. Saved Israelites who were under the law before they became members of the body of Christ. Unsaved Gentiles who were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and not under the law. The fourth, carnal saints and babes who were members of the body of Christ. And the fifth group, those who were of full age called the faithful in Christ Jesus. Now remember, for an in-depth explanation of these five different groups, I urge you to read Super Bi or, or watch Super Bible Facts for Super Bible Study Part 1. And if you keep these five different groups in mind, you'll derive both blessing and benefit as you carefully study this bonus 10th set of Super Facts. Okay, here we go. Number one, in Romans 2.16, Romans 16.25, and Timothy 2.8, the Apostle Paul referred to the gospel, which he preached as my gospel. In the Greek, in 2 Timothy 1.12, he referred to my deposit. In his oral and written ministry, Paul used the first person pronoun about 1,100 times. Note his statement in 1 Timothy 1.11, where he says, According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Now take note in 1 Timothy 5.23, Paul instructed Timothy to take medicine for his sickness. Now compare this with an entirely different program in Luke 9.6, where it says, And they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. In Luke, the kingdom gospel with healing was preached before any of the twelve told sinners that Christ would die for their sins. Read Luke 18, 31 to 34. Note one of the Apostle Paul's last statements in 2 Timothy 4, 20. He left Tro Trophimus sick and Milentum. Our point is test things that differ. All right, super fact number two. In the study of the book of Acts, we note that the Lord permitted the Apostle Paul to perform miracles similar to those done by the hands of the Apostle Peter, and just as many of them. They both spoke with tongues, they both healed all manner of diseases, with or without the imposition of hands. They both had miraculous experiences in jail. They both raised the dead. They each cured one lame from his birth. They both had special visions from the Lord and angels. Paul, in 2 Corinthians 12, 12, declared that his miracles were the signs of an apostle. It is significant that there is no record of signs and miracles done in Jerusalem among the Jews after Stephen's message and martyrdom in Acts 7, and no record of signs, miracles, tongues, etc. in any place after the divine judgment pronounced upon Israel in Rome and that can be found in Acts 28, 25 to 28. Okay, number three. In the study of the epistle of James, four statements should be considered. The first statement, the epistle is addressed to the scattered 12 tribes. The second point, James's words of Acts 15, 19, which says, my sentence is trouble not Gentile believers with Jewish religious practices. The third fact, James, with Peter, was a minister to the circumcision with the circumcision gospel, Galatians 2, 7 to 9. And the fourth thing to note is, it was James, according to Acts 21, 18 to 28, who, about 60 AD, persuaded Paul to act Jewish in the Jerusalem temple. Also note that the word assembly in James 2.2 is synagogue, referring to James 5.14, 
anointing the sick with oil, there is no record in any scripture that oil was put on any Gentile for any purpose unless it was on a proselyte before Paul became the apostle to the Gentiles. Those are very important points. All right, super fact four. During the Acts period, the Apostle Paul became a Jew under the law to the Jews under the law, 1 Corinthians 9, 20 to 22. In taking a Jewish vow, he shaved his head, Acts 18, 18. He circumcised Timothy, Acts 16, 3. He wanted to get to Jerusalem for Pentecost, Acts 20, 16. He apologized to Israel's high priest more than 25 years after the death of Christ, Acts 23, 5. He sat for seven days in the temple at Jerusalem as a Jew, Acts 21, 24 to 29. Paul never did any of these things after his declaration of Acts 28, 25 to 28. Very interesting. Up to the close of the Acts period, God preserved and protected Israel in their own land, permitting their temple to stand. And they continued with their temple worship. During those years, there was one order for the believing Jews and a somewhat different order for the Gentiles that believed. Acts 21, 24 to 25, and take a look at Acts 15, 11 to 24. Okay, super fact five. In Ephesians 6, 19 to 20, and in Colossians 4, 3 to 4, the Apostle Paul was in jail for proclaiming divine truth, which he called the mystery. He wanted saints to pray that his mouth might be opened and doors of opportunity might be opened for the proclamation of the mystery. In 2 Timothy 1.12, he called it my deposit. In 2 Timothy 2.8, Paul writes of my gospel and then adds, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Thus we see that the Apostle Paul was a prisoner in Rome for proclaiming the mystery. It is still necessary to pray for open doors for the proclamation of this glorious truth, and it is the duty of every servant of the Lord to make others see the dispensation of the mystery, Ephesians 3, 9. They can see by having God give unto them the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now, take a look at Ephesians 1, 16 to 23. Okay, super fact six. Take a look at 2 Timothy 1, 9, where it says, Who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Then read Ephesians 3.11, where it says, according to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Ephesians, and then Ephesians 3.9, and to make all men see what is the dispensation or fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. So, here we learn something more of the mystery, which had to do with God's eternal purpose in Christ Jesus, God's grace and purpose for members of Christ's body, before God called Israel and gave to Israel their program. In connection with the mystery in Ephesians, God speaks of predestination and the believer's position in the heavenlies. Okay, super fact seven. Now note Ephesians 3, 8. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And Acts 17, 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. The word unsearchable in Ephesians 3.8 actually means untraceable, that is, not found in the messages the Holy Spirit gave to Israel's prophets. In, in Acts 17.11, the Bereans could read Israel's prophets and check up on Paul, but no one could search the scriptures and find the mystery of Ephesians. That truth was not made known to Israel. Colossians 1, 24 to 27. 
That mystery revealed first to the Apostle Paul, the Lord declared was to complete his word. Colossians 1, 25-26. God wants his saints to know the truth of Ephesians and Colossians, where it says, Thence that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried away with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Ephesians 4.14. Okay, super fact eight. Every true Christian believes in the verbal inspiration of the Bible and that all scripture is profitable for, for instruction in righteousness, but every intelligent student of the scriptures knows that many of the divine instructions given to Israel about to enter Canaan in Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy are not to be obeyed by members of the body of Christ who are seated in the heavenlies in Christ, Ephesians 2.6. They should also know that many of the instructions in Matthew, Mark, and Luke are not for the obedience of these body members and that the program for the first 10 chapters of Acts is not God's spiritual program for members of Christ's body under the present reign of grace. Therefore, God's principle for Bible study for the appropriation and application of all other scripture is to study all other scriptures in the light of Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians, and other epistles of Paul in which are found the unmixed messages of grace and the divine truth designated the mystery. Now, so everybody must be asking, what is this mystery? Here is the mystery. Before Israel was created for God's glory, before all of the promises concerning Israel's coming glory and the millennial reign of Christ on earth, even before Adam had sinned, all was created. God predestinated that members of the body of Christ should be conformed to the image of his son. Romans 8, 28 to 29. They would be seated in the heavenlies in Christ. God's eternal purpose is to have a company of redeemed sinners separate and distinct from all other companies. Now dwell on this. Now these predestinated and justified believers are to be joined to Christ as one flesh to make one new man the perfect man with heavenly citizenship to appear with Christ in glory. Ephesians 2, 6, Ephesians 5, 31 to 32, Ephesians 2, 5, Ephesians 4, 13, Philippians 3, 20 to 21, and then Colossians 3, 1 to 4. You see, this the Father wants every Christian to make known, Ephesians 3, 9. And of course, Satan hates this message with a vicious hatred. In closing this series of Super Bible Facts for Super Bible Study, we quote several statements from the Holy Spirit through the pen of the Apostle Paul. In 1 Corinthians 3.10, According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. 1 Timothy 1.16, Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all longsuffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. 2 Timothy 2, 2, And the things that thou hast heard of me among my witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And in Colossians 1, 25-26, Whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. Then note the Holy Spirit speaking through the pen of the Apostle Peter in 2 Peter 3 15 to 16, where he says, An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, 
even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as rest as in wrestle, unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So there you have it. That's the last of this series. I pray that you all enjoyed it and were edified. Spread this message to everyone you know, far and wide, because the time is short. A grace be to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Bye-bye for now.